Hey guys, I'm Nelson Bonilla, and I'm watching Kendall Talks TV. Preview. If you don't mind me asking, what is it that you do for a living? What's up, guys? It's your host, Kendall Tucker, man. And today's guest, you may recognize from several different projects, two of his latest being Black and Blue, starring Tyrese Gibson, and one of my personal favorite shows, which is Ozark. Today, we have Nelson Bonilla with us. Did I say that correct, Bonilla? You know, I stopped, I stopped correcting people years ago. I figured I, I figured I butchered it. <laughs> it wasn't as far as as far as pronunciations go it wasn't bad like i if he had you not said anything i was just gonna roll with it man <laughs> but it's fast right it's bonilla the two l's are sort of silent okay bonilla right yes okay so that that's not my fault because that just doesn't look like it would be that no, not necessarily. <laughs> Unless you took a Spanish one class in high school, you probably wouldn't have known that. <laughs> well, how's it going, man? How's the uh, how's the quarantine life been treating you? <sighs> quarantine. You know, I had plans for 2020. Yep, I really did. But um, look. Um, so this thing is serious, right? And I don't know if any of us knew exactly how serious it would be. For me, I think it's about um, staying informed but not being obsessed, right? So if I feel the need that I need to get on and I need to figure out what the CDC is saying here in Atlanta, then I'll log on somewhere. I'll probably turn on a, a channel somewhere watch them for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll switch it up and go check out another channel for about 10 or 15 minutes. And I know intuitively like that the truth lies somewhere in between. Yeah. Right. So at that point, I feel like I've been updated. I've been informed. I can, I can stay away from obsessing about, what might happen, what could happen in the future, what's gonna to happen to our, our profession. Mm -hmm. And that provides a sense of balance for me and it allows me to be present, right? Because I'm here in the city with my wife and kids and, and I can enjoy that time in the midst of managing this time and what we were asked to do, right? Yeah. So uh, if I can manage that, then, you know, I'm, I'm okay, I can stay well. I hear you, man, that's a good positive outlook. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure you're ready for life to get back to, um, to normal like I am. And it's slowly, it's slowly getting there, but uh, definitely a good time to, you know, at least spend time with the family and do things that, you know, we usually don't get to do. Um, so the best thing about it is just be positive like yourself. You have to, and, and sometimes you have to find a way or you make a way, right? Mm -hmm. Life is really fast. And, you know, most of us take 10 when it is going fast like that, you know, tend to take things for granted. This forces you to slow things down and appreciate what's happening now. Mm -hmm. um, and you laser focus on the things that really matter. Uh, look, what's going on out here totally matters. So we're doing our part. Um, but in the midst of that, we can also cling to the fact that, hey, we're well. We're praying for those who may not be. And all we're asked to do is just to hold on. Yeah. Sometimes it might be holding on with white knuckles you know, and um, I'm cool with that because I have the, the ones that, that I care about the most um, here with me. So it makes it a little bit easier. I agree 100%, man, 100%. Now, let's jump into it. Let's ask some questions, man. Uh, what or who inspired you to be an actor? How'd you get your start in the industry? Oh my gosh, uh, I should be ready for that. I am ready for that. Um, <laughs> 
You know, for me, it was kind of a unique situation. I, 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 I tell people typically that I sort of stumbled into the business, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a kid, I always grew up watching um, the Six Million Dollar Man. So Lee Majors was my jam, man. Now, this may be a little before your time, Kendall. Yeah. I'm not sure how old you are, but I mean, you know, that's where it was at for me growing up. So Lee Majors was a big idol of mine. I, you know, as I got older, um, I was, um, you know, I was privy to some other shows like Welcome Back Cotter was mm -hmm. another hot one for me. So I, 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 you know, you would mimic these, these people that you, that you idol. And I, I played like a pretty mean Vinnie Barbarino. You know what I mean? Yeah. In middle school, we would all play the guys we would want to be. So, I mean, I, I never thought I'd, I'd be an actor. I moved to Atlanta long before I ever thought, you know, that's what, what's going to happen. I was going to a church down in South Georgia. And, you know, whenever you're a part of something that has changed your life, that inspires you to be better, uh, whether it's a job, whether it's a community, um, in this case, it happened to be a church, mm -hmm. you, you, you always want to find a way to give back. Right? To be Absolutely. Of what helped change your life. You know, when God, you know, opened my eyes, you know, he opened my eyes to this world. And you always want to kind of contribute. So every Sunday we would go to church and they had a drama team. And the drama team would put together these little two and three minute skits to help illustrate the pastor's message of the day. And I was like, I could do that and that's how it kind of got started right so again prior to that I was kind of lost I didn't didn't really have any specific set of skills you know I mean I was fairly smart I was that much sharper than the next guy you know maybe worked that much harder than than the average person um, but what he was able to do is he was able to sort of lift this veil, right? And expose me to this world and reveal this world to me. And in this world, I could be an actor. And that's, that's um, that was the beginning. That was certainly the beginning. That's awesome, man. So, and how many years ago was that? How long have you been doing it? Uh, so that was 2003, um, 2004, I started training, uh, in the city of Atlanta, a professional actor studio. And, um, that was the embryo stages, very rough time. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I was younger. I was, I still had, I was still a little arrogant. Um, and I, there was still some remnants of venom, you know, from like, you know, my childhood and, you know, even as a young man. So, you know, the, the, the beginning stages, uh, were, you know, was kind of like that hostile and, 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 and uncooperative kind of student, right? Yeah. Um, I think I told my instructor back then or my teacher, oh, you, you know, because he would ask me, Nelson, I'm like, what is your deal? Why do you want to become an actor? And I was like, first of all, I want to be rich and famous, dude, right? And, yeah. and then I think my second answer was, I want to give the middle finger to all of the people that I grew up with. You know what I mean? So immediately I had a lot that I, need to over, I needed to overcome. Yeah. I, you know, I was arrogant. I had no idea what I was getting myself involved with. Thank God that I found this studio and there were some real actors here. You know what I mean? And they put me on the right path. You there? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, sorry. They put me on the right path, gave me every right book, and, 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 and they came beside me and lifted me up and showed me what it was like. Um, 
to pursue this acting career, how to shed all of this baggage, right? To break this person down, all of my demons, shed them so that I can experience and have this human experience with this person that's beside me, in front of me. Uh, so I was very lucky in that sense. That's good, man. Now, do you have a, um, um, do you have another job outside of acting or do you act full time? Yeah, man. I mean, at this point, I think every, it, it, look, it behooves everyone to have a gig, something that's going to carry you and sustain you. I pray that we all get to a point where, you know, our acting uh, industry sustains uh, all of these things that you have to, you know, whether it's your house, your car, your kids, you know, so I, I would encourage anyone at this point to have a side hustle, whatever that is. Yeah, absolutely. Mine happens to be um, a design and install company for outdoor living spaces. Oh, nice. Right? So being in the city of Atlanta, there's a lot of renovation, uh, you know, there's a lot of neighborhoods being redone, refabbed. Um, so eventually people get to their backyards and they give me a call and I'll go over there and I'll walk them through, you know, a version of an outdoor living space, whether it's fire, whether it's water, whether it's just patio space, pergola, anything outdoors um, is, how, uh, is how I made my living. Um, I would say even, uh, even so today. Nice, nice. Now, out of all the projects, which project have you been involved in that you would consider was your big break? I think it has to be hands down. Hands down has to be Ozark, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, it's a massive show. And, and, and to be honest, I didn't really know when I kind of got into it, how big it would be, I, I was still learning like what's up with Netflix yeah. at that point. Even that was, you know, I was kind of a, I was a late bloomer when it came to Netflix. Yeah. So I knew it was going to be a big show. I knew with Jason Bateman and Laura Lenny, um, even Lisa Embry, you know, I mean, I knew that they were going to be, they were going to bring with them a massive, massive audience um but you know i had no idea how big a part i would play right whether um i would stick around uh what they really needed for me but uh hand, yeah hands down i think i've gotten uh i've gotten much more traction out of that than anything i've done prior to how'd you how'd you land the role just a regular audition yeah, man. So this they started season three, I think, back in 2016, 2000, uh, season one. And so everyone heard Ozark is coming to Atlanta, right? So anybody who's anybody wants to get on the show. And everybody was hitting up their agents. Like, I, you know, I really need. So at that point, we had already we had already been making a little bit of noise, right? I've been fortunate enough to be, uh, to have some co-star stuff on some TV, some network TV, a couple of film spots. So I was starting to make a little noise and the requests were coming in for, for Ozark. Dude, I must have submitted dozens of tapes for season one, Oh yeah. Right? And nothing. Some were good. Some were one, you know, one-liners. Some were really needy. Um, and nothing, you know. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. And at that point, no one really knows: is there going to be a season two? You know, what's going to happen? So you move on. You know, you 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 train yourself, man. Again, yeah. we talked about balance early on. If you're not careful, what we do, if we're not 
if we're not staying healthy and well, at times it can be a full on assault on your spirit, right? Because if you're not working, you tend to think, oh man, like what's wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Yeah. You know? So season two comes around and I think, I believe this role was the first request for season two. And I immediately noticed two things. Number one, that the character's name was Nelson, right? And I kind of chuckled. And again, we're so cynical in nature. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of excuses of why they're not going to hire me. It's so dis destructive. And I chuckled. I'm like, man, they'll probably not hire me simply because of that. The second thing I noticed right away was the audition. I think was literally like four or three words. Mm -hmm. Nelson was to walk up to Wendy and Laura, I'm sorry, to Marty and Wendy and tell them to get inside the car. Now, I want you to think of this in kind of the, the quantum realm, right? Because all of these thoughts and calculations are going through my mind in like nanoseconds. Right, so I'm like, man, this is this is BS. I'm not gonna blow my chance to be on this shot on, on this show for like three, you know, for one liner, and and then the bitterness is starting to swell up, and I'm going, man, this is just crap, man. What am I doing? And I swear, simultaneously, I must have been booking a taping session as I'm complaining in my mind at the same time, right? Because yeah. I think instinctively I knew, Nelson, you're not gonna pass this up. You're gonna submit a tape for this and um, you're gonna be okay. Either you're gonna get it or you're not gonna get it, yeah. but they're asking for you. And I think that's one of the things that we have to remind ourselves. We don't get feedback, you know, you either get called in or you don't. But if you're being called and they're requesting to see you over and over and over again, then you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. It just, sometimes you have, it, it takes a beat to get over yourself and, and bring that back to the forefront. So I taped it, I sent it. And as they say, here we are. That's awesome, man. I was, that actually my my next question was going to be was Nelson always the name of the character or were they just like hey we'll just use your name so that's funny yeah, that's that's the funny part because I'll get that a lot I'll get like you know oh man it's so awesome they let you use your your real name man you must be like <laughs> you must be really legit and I'm like no I really had nothing to do with that <laughs> like Nelson was the character's uh, name the weird thing is because of Nelson's role in season two, no one really heard his name very much, right? Mm -hmm. He was sort of like this omnipresent person driving Helen around, opening doors for her, taking out the trash, if you will. Um, so he was there, but just kind of always in the background. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Do his job, you know. And when season three came around, we noticed right away that, you know, he was a little bit more incorporated mm -hmm. to the storyline and, and, and we got to have a little bit more fun with him. Um, and that's exactly what we did, man. It was really, um, season three was amazing. Now, I've had a lot of actors tell me a lot of times you don't know what's going on or what your lines are till the day before or the day of the shoot. Is that the case with Ozark and you, or the most part is everything pretty much laid out? No, I mean, I think there's a, there's an in-between mark, right? There is very seldom, there's a funny story, hopefully I'll get a chance to tell you about the scene. Very seldom will you ever get your, your lines or your sides the night before, unless you're coming in as a day player and you mm. may only have a line or two um, uh, 
uh, for that day. So it's not unusual for you to get a call sheet that night and get your lines that night or even on the day of. Yeah. Typically for a, a, a cast member recurring, they give you the courtesy of giving you the entire script um, when we start shooting the episode. So sometimes they'll give you a block, meaning the first two or three episodes. Sometimes it's episode by episode. Um, it just depends on the scheduling and who the director is. We get guest directors in all the time. And um, so, I, I, again, I think it's kind of, uh, it's a middle ground. If you're coming in as a day player, you'll probably get it that day or that night. But most of us will have uh, the time we need to, to really dive into this story and, and show up ready yeah. with options. You know, I mean, that's, that's the important part. And when, you, when you're ready, prepared, and you have some options available to the director, it's easier for him to nudge you one way or the other. You know, and, and I think that's the way they would prefer to have it. As to, yeah. as to lift, I mean, imagine lifting a person from one direction to another. That could be dramatic as opposed to just kind of nudging him. Yeah. Okay, this is, I kind of see where you're at, but think about it in this uh, capacity and it's an easier adjustment um, yeah. for everyone. You know, it's funny because I was talking to Mark Menchaca who plays Russ Langmore in the first two seasons. And he <laughs> told me that, he told me that he was not aware of his makeout scene with the FBI agent in the hotel room till the night before. And I was like, I was, he was like, I was, I was okay with it, but I just, I wasn't aware of it. They, they totally forgot to tell me that part. You know, so I, I read for Agent Trevor in uh -huh. season one, and I did a lot of work on that. I mean, I wanted that role, you know what I mean? And I understood the nature and I knew, um, and, and, and I wanted it, man. And I brought in all the heavy guns, everyone I knew from my personal coach to my current instructor. And I always wondered about that. You know, yeah. that sounds, it almost sounds diabolical. Like, you know what? Just let them sit tight. We'll kind of fill them in tomorrow. Yeah. I hate to think, you know, I'm kind of joking on in, in, in that sense. Um, because everyone, you know, so above board on Ozark, everyone is, is amazing. Um, I'll tell you, Kendall, I don't, it's, that's interesting. I'm not sure how I would respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, no. though, in, 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 in his defense and in their defense, it, it was, you know, I mean, it was out there. They really went for it. You yeah. know, it wasn't as bad as, or it wasn't as graphic as some of the other scenes, but, um, you know, he did it, man. Yeah, I think I mean, he did a great job. And personally, I would have liked to see him on the show a little bit longer than he was, but yeah, yeah I think he did a great do job. Do you have a, uh, a favorite scene of yours? You know, I really, I do, man. And I know I should say, my scene with Mary Louise, who played Sue, mm -hmm. the therapy, uh, the therapist, right? Um, just because of the nature of the yeah. scene and how we had to do this cat and mouse dance. Um, and, and quite frankly, you know, it was the biggest scene uh, that, that I got to be a part of. So, and, and that's what I, I referenced earlier that was one of those stories where the showrunner, Chris Mundy, was like, man, I can't wait for you to see what the writer wrote, this really sweet scene with you and Sue, and how you're going to uh, interact with her and take care of her. So again, it's almost two years that I've been around just kind of playing my part, very disciplined, um, because it took, a, a, Look, when you're on set, 
and you know what you're capable of, you want to contribute, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you're there, you want to contribute even more. So you end up, you're chomping at the bit to be a bigger part of the story. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, and anyone who ever feels that, you know, to just hang in there. Be patient. Sometimes your job is to show up, be on time, be professional, and be ready, man. And that is where, that's where your value comes in at, mm -hmm. right? So anyway, so we're, I, I, I get the call sheet, I'm shooting, and it's like this great scene, hey, I hope you're ready, and I'm like, all right, uh, by the way, it's six o'clock, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't have the, the, the script yet. And the second second, it's like, yeah, don't worry about it, it's gonna go out, uh, just hang in there, you'll get it tonight. So I'm like, cool, um, now it's 10, 11, it's midnight, and I'm like, hey, I don't have my script for tomorrow. And I think I'm doing a fairly decent scene. Yeah. So I think it came in at about 1230 that night, a few pages, and I just dove in. And um, it was it was amazing because Mary Louise is so funny and kind of a dry sense of humor. Yeah. And she kind of, you know, and she doesn't have to try very hard. You know what I mean? And the thing with Alex Surikoff, the, the director that did the last block of season three, he did some episodes in season two as well. This thing was always Nelson. This is your job, right? There's nothing personal about what you do. All right, you're here to do a job, indifference. You could do it, you care, you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, so it took it, again, it took an amazing amount of, of, of courage to be still and let the scene work itself out. Yeah. And um, I, think, I think that's why I had so much fun with that scene. Yeah, definitely. I would agree. Now, what's the plans for season four? Has there been any talk about it? I know COVID-19 slowed everything down, but has there been any talks or, uh, of uh, season yeah. four and when it's going to start? I, I, think, I think Jason went uh, on the record saying that this wasn't going to be a six, seven, eight season series, right? I, you know, I, I think he went on the record um, with an interview and said it was always slated for like four or five seasons. So we're really close to figuring out what's going to happen, the finality of, of these stories. Um, and I do believe we were, it wasn't official. It, it was never announced. Netflix never officially announced picking up season four or five. But I just had this feeling. Yeah. You know, after season three was released, it was, you know, I don't want to take anything for granted, but it was like, wow, if you don't, or if we can't, uh, I would be super, super surprised. So I think a lot of us were just waiting mm -hmm. uh, to get the word, and then the world stopped. And, you know, there are new guidelines going back and forth from the union to these governors, and and I think we're, I think we're close to yeah. coming to terms on how do we do this safely? How do we, we responsibly bring these people in, provide this forum, this intimate setting for them and keep them as safe as possible. Um, and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for where we're, we're definitely closer today than we were, you know, a week ago. Yeah. Now, how would you like your character to end? Would you want to just ride out the season or towards the end of the season, do you want to die? How would you like Nelson, how would you like his character to come to an end? Dude, nobody wants to die, right? So <laughs> I've always been a fan of Ruth. 
right? Yeah. So you, you know, if I was forced to contemplate my ending, I think if anyone, as an audience member, I'm saying, I have mm -hmm. no idea where this is going. Um, very seldom do we take or they put us on the, the obvious or even logical track, right? We yeah. the fun and drama in that. But as an audience member, I think if anyone earned the right to confront and take Nelson on, it would have been, it would be Ruth, you know? And, and because of everything, the dynamics that they just flirted with actually in season three, when we see Ruth and Nelson and how stoic he maintains himself, understanding what he's taken from her. Yeah. You know, even though there's really nothing personal, all I did was what I was told to do. Yeah. It just happened to be, um, and I'm assuming we're putting out spoiler alerts before this, Kendall. Yeah. You know, it just so happened to be your dad and then your lover, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't technically or specifically good give the order. I don't go around randomly, mm -hmm. arbitrarily taking people out. That's not what I do. Uh, I'm given um, a set of orders and, you know, I just carry them out. Yeah. So I think as an audience member, I would love to see the, the tricky part is I think, I think, you know, as, as diabolical and shady as as Ruth is, I mean, she clearly doesn't have the skill set to take him on head on, but I doubt that she would anyway. You know what yeah. I mean? Now she's with, you know, the dynamics have changed. The alliances have shifted, yeah. you know? So I hope it's pretty epic. You know, it'd be nice to go out and have you know, blaze of bullets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we just, uh, as an actor, you just want it to be memorable, you know, and um, at, the, at the very last. Yeah, the very, very end. <laughs> around. And you know, that's interesting too. I think, you know, talking about dynamics and alliances, look, the birds are going to need someone, you know, so I'm hoping Again, how do you know they're going to need an asset like Nelson? Wendy clearly has the capacity to use him. Um, so we'll see, you know, because that's really what it's about with Nelson. You just point him in the direction you need him to go, and you know, he's that robot, yeah, definitely. And I think you played the, the part extremely well. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on season four. How can people follow you um, on social media? Stay up to date with what you're doing. Oh, it's easy, man. At NelsonBX13 at Twitter or Instagram. All right, man. Well, Nelson, I appreciate you sitting down with me, brother. And I look forward to seeing more of your work on the TV and look forward to uh, doing this again in person, hopefully in the near future. Yeah. No, it was at my absolute pleasure. You're a total gentleman, man. I, I really dig what you do. And just say the word and I'll come back, brother. Appreciate it, bro.